Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and today we're going to learn about something called isotopes. And before we start talking about isotopes, we first need to take a look and talk about the periodic table of elements. If we take a look at the periodic table of elements, each little box here is going to have uh, a number right here on the bottom or underneath each chemical symbol. For example, lithium 6.94, beryllium 9.01, etc, etc, etc. This number on the bottom is called the average atomic mass, people. What this is right here, the average atomic mass, it's the average of all known isotopes of that element and their relative abundance or uh, the percentage that they occur naturally in, 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 in the universe. Okay, so the numbers at the bottom, these are not mass numbers. These are the average atomic masses, and we talked about what that means in a different video. But understand that these are actually calculated. These are calculated through a uh, process that we're going to learn about in the video after this one. All right, so the point of this is that if we take a look at all the elements on the periodic table leading up to number 92, this is the uh, last naturally occurring uh, element number 92 everything past this is is synthetic or made in a the laboratory then what we'll notice is that all of these guys here all of the naturally occurring atoms or elements they have one or more different isotopes okay so if you take a look all of these average atomic masses here they're not whole numbers because of that reason they're an average of the uh, of the different isotopes and their relative abundance in nature. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk a little bit about isotopes. So let's jump right in and take a look. So what are isotopes? Well, it says right here that isotopes are atoms of the same element that have different numbers of neutrons in their nucleus. And because they have different numbers of neutrons in their nucleus, they're going to have different atomic masses or mass numbers. And like we said earlier, all 92 naturally occurring elements form one or more different isotopes, and some of those might be radioactive. So what does it mean to be radioactive? Well, that just means that the nucleus of that atom over time is going to lose some of its mass to energy. Some of the mass of the nucleus is going to get converted into energy, different forms of energy like alpha particles and beta particles and gamma rays, etc., etc. And we'll talk about that in a different video. But for now, just understand that isotopes are atoms of the same element that have different numbers of neutrons in their nucleus, and therefore have different mass numbers. So what we're looking at right here are the three isotopes of hydrogen. We have protium, we have deuterium, and we have, uh, we have tritium right here. And so if we take a look at each one of these isotopes, we'll notice that every single one of these has one proton inside of its nucleus. So because it has one proton inside of its nucleus, that is what's going to make each one of these hydrogen. Keep in mind that it's the number of protons that are in the nucleus of an atom that determine what element it is. All right, so because these have one proton in the nucleus, then each one of these guys is going to be a hydrogen atom. However, if we take a look closer, inside the nucleus here, there are no neutrons in this one. There is one neutron in this one, and there are two neutrons in this one. So these are the three isotopes of hydrogen. Hydrogen 1 only has a proton in its nucleus and therefore has a mass of only 1. Remember, electrons have a mass of 0 AMUs. So the only thing that has mass in this hydrogen isotope is the proton. Therefore, it's hydrogen 1. If we take a look right here, we have a proton and a neutron. So a proton has a mass of 1 AMU and so does a neutron. 1 AMU. So add these together, that's where you get this 2 from. So deuterium or hydrogen 2 has got uh, one proton and one neutron in its nucleus. And if we take a look at hydrogen 3 or tritium, we'll notice it has one proton, one neutron, and one, uh, or actually two neutrons, I apologize, one extra neutron. All right, add these together, you get three right here. All right, so once again, isotopes are atoms of the same element that have different numbers of neutrons inside of their nucleus, and therefore they're going to have different mass numbers or atomic masses. Okay, and so you might be saying to yourself, well, what is this right here? Well, this is, an, uh, this is a nuclear symbol or isotope notation, and in a different video, uh, we learned how to determine how many protons, electrons, and neutrons there are if you're given this uh, isotope or notation or nuclear symbol. This number right here is the atomic number. And this number right here is going to be your mass number, right? This is the number of protons plus neutrons, which in this case 
or in this example, there's only one proton, so the mass number is one. All right, so those are the three different isotopes of hydrogen. Now, let's take a look at the, uh, the, uh, the different isotopes of carbon. All right, so here we go. Here are uh, three different isotopes of carbon. There's carbon-12, there's carbon-13, there's carbon-14. And what makes every one of these carbon is the fact that every one of these has, has got six protons inside its nucleus, right? Count them up. There's six protons. There's six protons in here, and there's six protons in here, right? Also, you'll notice that there's also six electrons outside of the nucleus of every single one of these isotopes, right? So the only thing that's different in each one of these atoms is going to be the number of neutrons, right? So carbon-12 has six neutrons in its nucleus, carbon-13 has seven neutrons inside of its nucleus, and carbon-14 has eight neutrons inside of its nucleus. So the mass of this is going to be 12, right? The number of neutrons plus protons, six plus six is 12. The mass of this isotope of carbon is going to be 6 plus 7, which is 13. And the mass of this uh, isotope of carbon is going to be 6 plus 8, which is where we get 14 from. All right, so isotopes, once again, are atoms of the same element that have different numbers of neutrons in their nucleus and therefore have different mass numbers or atomic masses. All right, so let's work a couple example problems out where we determine the number of of, uh, protons, electrons, and neutrons there are in different isotopes. All right, so at this point, I recommend that you pause the video, people. Pause the video and try to work through these yourself. All right, so go ahead and pause it. And uh, I'm just going to go through here and explain how we're going to fill this out. So right here, we have got carbon-14, right, which is one isotope of carbon. So because it's carbon, it's number six on the periodic table, meaning it's atomic number six. So there's six protons, there's six electrons. And to get the number of neutrons, we take the mass number minus the atomic number or number of protons, and we'll end up with eight right here. What about this one, 19, 19 protons? If we take a look on the periodic table of elements, uh, the, uh, the element with atomic number 19 is going to be potassium, right? It's going to be potassium. So I'm just going to put a K. I'm just going to put a symbol here. You can spell this out or just put a K. All right, so it's got 19 protons, which means it has 19 electrons. And so what is the total mass of this atom going to be? Well, protons plus neutrons, 19 plus 22, that gives us 41. So potassium 41 is the name of this isotope. What about this one right here? We have got 50 electrons. In any stable atom, there's going to be the same number of electrons as there are protons. So what is the atomic number 50 on the periodic table? Well, that looks like it's going to be 10, so Sn, right? And last but not least, we take the number of neutrons plus the number of protons, and that will give us the mass. So 10 120 is the isotope that we're talking about here. What about gold 198? Well, gold, if we look on the periodic table of elements, it looks like it's number 79. So it has 79 protons. It has 79 electrons. And let's see here. How do we figure out how many neutrons it has? Well, when we take 198 minus the atomic number, which is 79, we end up with, it looks like 119, right? 119. There we go. What about this one? Uh, has 55 protons, so that's the atomic number 55, and it looks like we're talking about cesium. So cesium, but which isotope of cesium are we talking about? Well, we have 55 protons, and so it's going to have 55 electrons, and to get the mass number here, we take the number of neutrons plus the number of protons, and when we add these together, it looks like we end up with 133, so cesium-133. What about this right here, beryllium-110? Beryllium is number four on the periodic table, so it has four protons and four electrons. And how do we get the number of neutrons? Well, we take the mass number here, 10 minus the atomic number, four, and we end up with six, six neutrons. What about phosphorus-32? If we take a look on the periodic table, phosphorus is number 15, so it has 15 protons, 15 electrons, and you guessed it, to get the number of neutrons here, we're going to take the mass number, 32, minus the uh, atomic number, 15, and we'll get 17 neutrons. All right, so that's isotopes in a nutshell. Keep in mind that 
isotopes or uh, atoms of the same element that have different numbers of neutrons in the nucleus and therefore different atomic masses and you'll be all right. If you like what you see, go ahead and click the little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and feel free to leave any comments in the comments section down below or any questions that you might have as well. And I hope you guys found this helpful.